right guys, how you doing? This is Eric from RuleTheWasteland.com, SecretOfTheInternet.com. This is what has become one of my favorite times of the month, and that is the Battle Box Delivery. This one's nice and beefy. Can't wait to see what we're gonna get into in this one. And as always, I'm gonna try and find out what the theme is on my own without looking at it, which usually isn't too hard, they're pretty obvious. But it's still fun to pick up on the theme. There we go. All right, so what do we got here? Off-grid tools. I'm liking the sound of that. You know, people like to use their knives for cutting open boxes. I always feel like tape is just kind of a waste to dollop and gummy up knife blades. So I always just keep one of these little cheap razor blades put a magnet on, I stick it on the fridge, and I can always have it there to grab it to open Amazon packages and things like that. Yeah, I have a bunch of cool knives I could use, but why use them just to cut tape? It's fairly heavy. It looks like an emergency hammer, seatbelt cutting tool type thing. That's exactly what it is, I guess. Well, this is a multi-tool ax. Push, then twist. Oh, and you have a saw in there. Pretty cool. You have, this is pretty beefy. Probably was close to two pounds. A hammer, nail puller, wrench, bottle opener, different size wrenches. Got an edge on top and the front. Glass breaker, seat belt cutter, as you can see, saw in the handle. Oh, and it's a gas shut off as well. I believe this is you can use for gas, and there's another nail puller. Hardened steel glass breaker, bottle opener, can opener, box cutter. Sockets, lanyard pass through, nail puller, seatbelt, wire twist, pry bar. Pretty cool. This would be great for a vehicle or house emergency tool. Pretty cool deal. Not as many applications for wilderness survival, stuff like wrenches and nail pullers, glass breakers. This is more of a urban survival tool. So already that may be a clue as to the theme. Here we got a little Kershaw Shuffle. It's a nice little blade with a bottle opener. Pretty cool. Manual opener. Short so you'll be able to carry it legally in a lot of places. This is called a Silcox Key. I've actually mentioned one of these after I think Bibles and Barbells channel did one on it. I've mentioned similar type tools. And this is for, this is different size um, they're just typical like socket looking things, but they're for sized for water um, and I think maybe gas, but mostly water spigots, industrial and commercial. They don't put a handle on there or just a normal handle so that people can't come up and just use the water. You have to have a Silcox key to even be able to use the hoses and things like that on spigots on side of buildings. So I believe that's called a Silcox key. Useful. I've recommended those in the past. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, cool. It's a mini e-tool. Or if you've been in the army, you know what that is. It's a short for entrenching tool, basically a fold, folding shovel. This is very similar looking to the military design. It's just about a third of the, the normal size. And then you have an additional handle you can put on there. And they're usually made like this so that if you Screw that, you can lock it into a pickaxe, which is that side. Or I'm not sure exactly what how this one works, but normally it goes down like that, and you lock it into place. And you have your shovel, a little bottle opener, kind of a, a saw tooth on that side. This is great for a little bug out bag or something. Not as heavy as a uh, typical e-tool. I have to figure out exactly how to work this. There we go, you just screw it up. 
locks it into place. In the pickaxe formation, where you back it off a little bit until you can turn it, and then you tighten it and locks it into the shovel formation. Very cool. I'm liking this a lot. Because I am going, I'm moving soon, as I've mentioned to you guys. And part of the move is going to be a over 2,000 mile car ride over a few days. So I've been definitely looking to tweak my kind of vehicle kit bug out bag for that situation. And something like this and this are both going to be great additions to that. Pretty cool. So I'm already, it's looking like a, a vehicle bag or a get home bag type situation. Seven inch. See, it looks like one of those pry bars. Oh yeah, these are cool. Just a blunt piece of steel, Ontario knife, two edge, bam. Nice little pry bar. It almost feels like a whetstone. I'd be interested to see if maybe that is a secondary function of it or if that's just the type of material it's made out of. It feels like it's embedded with like the same material as a whetstone. But these are useful because you can just go ham with them and not because you know not damage a knife or something else. Oh here's our knife, it's right on top. Or actually no, this is another pry bar. So this is just a, like a backup or an alternate blade. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So you can swap out. I'm not sure if this is designed to be swapped out or if it's just another one that you can uh, use independently. It does look like the, no it doesn't. Okay, these don't line up. So this is just meant to be used independently. This one has a handle on it and a little bit more length and you add the little glass breaker on the bottom. Pretty cool stuff though. Both Ontario knives, both made out of that same material. I'll have to look and see what that is. It's because an interesting feel to it. Some sort of weird steel. Nice little batch of paracord, always useful. You can make lanyards, you can do all sorts of stuff with it. Tie down tarps, everything. Timberline. It's gonna be like a tarp tie down or something. Oh, cool. It's a mini pry bar. Bottle opener, gap, lanyard hole, flathead screwdriver end. So this one has a sharpened, not super sharp, but sharp enough. And a can opener, bottle opener. When it comes to the nifty little neck, pretty good retention, not super great. You have to be careful that that didn't fall out on you. Maybe tie the lanyard off so even when you pull it off, it's connected. Pretty cool little tool. So we have three or four different kinds of pry bars. They're big into the busting into things. This looks like a gas siphon pump thing. This is definitely part of like a vehicle bag, get home bag type thing. This looks like for siphoning gas. It says oil. Spray light oil into barrel. Oh no, maybe this is just an air pump. And they're just talking about lubing it up. Looks more like a liquid pump to me. I'll look at the list. Ready man. Bunch of little saw blades and maybe they're supposed to be spearheads, arrowheads. So you can make mini saws and either make arrows or spears. And they're more disposable than putting your knife on a, a stick or something like that. You don't have to worry about, so that's pretty good for like a wilderness survival situation. Ready, man. And this is a pretty slick bag. So man, maybe I'll already have my bag. I won't even have to, I, this looks like a backpack. Let me get it back in the frame for you guys in a second once I get it out of the bag. See, it has the straps. Nice, cool gray color. Ready, man. It's got additional Elastics on the outside here so you can attach things to it Feels like it has a uh, one of those you can set it flat and just open the whole thing which is great for kit type bags 
because you can access stuff a little more easily. And then it has a Velcro closure as well. I'm kind of mixed on my feelings about Velcro. In general, I, I mean, it's so useful, you can't deny that. But it's loud, which, you know, might be not be tactical. And it can wear out. And once the Velcro on a bag like this is worn out, you, it's very rare that you would replace it. Now, they have gotten a lot better. This military style, I don't know what they did differently. I think the pile is a little bit differently. The hooks are pretty much the same, but they're short, shorter and stiffer. And they use a denser pile, because they call it hook and pile in the military, because uh, Velcro is a brand name, kind of like Kleenex. They're really just facial tissues, so they can't call it Velcro. In fact, it isn't Velcro, it's some other contractor, I'm guessing. And uh, yeah, so the hook and pile, but they've gotten better with it over the years. I think the military versions have been better than years past. A lot firmer hold, a lot more resilient. You don't get as much stuff trapped in there. And it, they do last a pretty long time, but I'm just kind of always mixed on it. Yeah, and then you see just one big open compartment and one that you can hide behind. This is padded too, which is nice because if you put something like this or that little tool in there and you don't have any, and it's just fabric on the back, it could be lumpy against your back when you do decide to use this as a backpack. But this is a pretty cool little bag for making a car kit. Now I do want to see what the hell this thing is. So we're gonna look at this. This is the off-grid survival axe elite. This is a nice hunk of steel, I'll tell you that. At least two pounds, I can see, I'd say. So let's see that pump. My car to scales, breacher. That's the pry bar thing here, which these are more useful than you might think. Having something you can bang around and not worry about ruining a knife. Manual fuel oil hand pump, yeah. So like I said, this thing is for fuel or oil. You can use it if you break down to help siphon out of a gas tank or something like that of another vehicle in just a normal situation or a zombie apocalypse. Pretty, oh, civil unrest is a situation. Urban survival, so yeah. So not specifically related to a car kit, but definitely at Urban, which I picked up on that with things like the Silcox key and a gas shutoff valve, pry bars, things like that, seat belt cutters. I really like this bag. This is one of those that may not seem as sexy to people, but this is all stuff that I've like mentioned before in my videos, and you would actually be using in a real world survival situation. I mean, if you think about the stuff that you would actually have to do, especially in an urban situation, zombie apocalypse type thing. This is the type of tools you would need. Industrial stuff, pry bars, digging, stuff like that. So, I am definitely stoked about this bag. Like I said, even though it's not maybe not as exciting looking or sexy as a lot of the other ones, this is probably one of the more useful for the average person. Survival, or I mean, um, yeah, battle boxes that they've put out. There is not really anything in here that you wouldn't that wouldn't be extremely useful in a uh, real shit hit the fan scenario in and in, you know even suburban or urban setting. The only thing that I really think doesn't go too well with the theme is this. Not that these aren't useful or good, but they're just not necessarily specifically related to urban survival. I mean, you could use them for spearing pigeons and stuff. Unless these are supposed to be some kind of lock pick, which it really does not look like that. And you wouldn't need that many of them. You would need a a um, tension bar and a, I forget what the other one's called, but these are not, sh oh no, I think it is. It shows, let me see if I can. It shows lock keys all over the back. So maybe these are supposed to be lock picking tools. Maybe you bend those, I don't know. Let me see what it says on the ready man lock blocker access denial card. Interesting. So these, if I'm not mistaken, are designed to jam into a lock maybe and make it so that it can't be opened or picked with the key. Very strange. Maybe you shove those in there and break them off, something like that. I'm going to have to research that one because I'm not sure. 
what that, and that must be what they mean. Yep, four-way silk hotkey. This is the EDC pocket tool. Cursaw shuffle. This is great because it's very small, so if you're not in a WROL situation, you still have to worry about carrying a knife that's legal. A knife like this is going to be legal in most places in the U.S. Not all, so do you do your research, but a lot more than something like this, obviously. Just on the sheer size alone. There's not, I don't think there's anywhere that has a more stringent size requirement than two, than three inches, I think, or under three inches in the U.S., maybe two and three quarters, which is about what this looks like for the sharpened portion of the blade. I would guess about two and three quarters, maybe even two and a half. Let's see if it says. Blade, 2.4. So, yeah. So, that th it's only three and a half or three and a quarter inches closed. So, this is a baby knife. So, you're never going to get too much shit for this. Now, I'm not promising you this is legal everywhere in the States because I'm almost certain that it's probably not. But it very well might be. And uh, you're going to have a lot less areas that it is illegal than with some other larger knives or more, you know, kind of assisted opening, things like that. And in, the, in a situation where it's, you're somewhere where it's not necessarily legal, maybe you don't know, they're probably not going to know you have it unless they go for a pat down or something like that. So, But definitely know your local knife laws. That's important. So yeah, this is a great... I definitely want to look up what these are made out of. Very interesting material. Some kind of weird carbon steel, I'm guessing, but it feels almost exactly like a whetstone. Pretty cool. Always good to have a little bit of that around. You can do everything from tourniquets to um, securing things. This is really cool. This is definitely, mo a lot of this stuff will go in my car bag. I love, I'm loving this little mini shovel. Because, you know, if the, obviously if you're trying to dig a fighting position or something, this is going to be a little small. But if you're trying to make a car kit and fit with all your other stuff and you just think that maybe I'm going to have to, you know, break down, maybe dig a latrine or dig out a, um, from under a little tire if I get stuck in the sand. Something like this just so you're not using your hands is going to be great. And it'll take up so much less space and probably is only about a pound, pound and a half. So pretty cool. I like this one. As always, they have not disappointed. Great battle box. This one is extremely useful stuff that you'll be able to use in a lot of everyday situations. You won't have to wait to be lost in the woods or a zombie apocalypse to get some use out of this battle box right here. So check them out. B-A-T-T-L-B-O-X.com. Thanks again to the guys from Battle Box for sending this to me. I'm loving it. And uh, we'll definitely have to do some videos testing out some of these pry bars and maybe even the pump and, and the e-tool and things like that. And I'll show you guys my finished get home bag slash uh, car kit slash bug out bag, whatever, when I put that all together before I move. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you later.